I have a new favorite lens, the lower 100 millimeter f 2.8 two times macro lens. In this video, you're going to find out why. So I have had the lower 100mm f2.8 2 times macro lens for several weeks now. First of all I had the RF version, I then got sent the EF version to compare the two. And the reason they sent me the both is because I needed to decide which one I wanted to buy. So first of all I absolutely love this lens, I think it's a fantastic lens and even better it's one of the best bang for buck macro lenses you can buy. Now I've been using these lenses for several weeks now, I even took it out on a macro adventure which you can see here and I think they are absolutely fantastic, the two times macro is great so you can go from infinity focusing to two times macro without changing a lens all in one single lens, and that is great. This is the Laura 100mm f2.8 2 times ultra macro APO lens. This is a 100mm focal length so it competes directly with the Canon 100mm macro lens. However, this one has 2 times macro whereas the Canon only has 1 times macro. The benefit of this lens is that it does 2 times macro. In this example here you can see on the left which is 1 times macro from the Canon lens versus 2 times macro from the Laura. It comes in mounts for Canon and Nikon for both mirrorless and DSLR, also comes in the Sony mount and there are other mounts coming in the future. This is a fully manual lens unless you buy the Canon EF version which has automatic aperture and lens electronic coupling. This is a fully manual focusing lens, this lens is for full frame and APS-C cameras. The construction of this lens is absolutely solid and at the price point of $450 it's absolutely fantastic. The maximum aperture is f2.8 with the minimum being f22. I wouldn't suggest you go anywhere over f16 or f18 because of diffraction. We have 12 elements in 10 groups with 9 aperture blades which create some very nice out of focus or bokeh areas behind and in front of your subject. There is a 67mm filter thread and believe me you're going to need it, more on that later. The lens features an angle of view of 24.4 degrees. This particular lens which is the EF version raising at 638 grams. You can also get a tripod collar for this lens but I've never had to use it because the lens is actually quite light. The lens hood that comes with this lens is adequate, it does the job, it's made out of plastic, I'm not really fussed about having plastic lens hoods, it keeps the weight down in my bag, but it does the job well. When shooting into bright lights there is a lot of flaring which lets this lens down a little bit. To be fair, you're not really going to be pointing this into the sun, particularly if you're using a mirrorless camera because you are going to destroy your sensor. So the working distance for this lens at one times macro is 9.5 centimeters and at two times macro it's eight centimeters. At one times magnification, at 2.8, there's a lot of vignetting, but it's nothing you can't fix. The vignetting becomes perfectly okay at 5.6 and is completely gone by f9. At two times macro, there's less vignetting at 2.8, cleans up nicely by f5.6 and is completely gone by f7.1. None of the vignetting in any of my tests could not be fixed easily using Lightroom. However, Lightroom doesn't have an auto profile for this lens yet, so you do have to do it manually. On an APS-C camera, the vignetting on the lens is less noticeable and is gone by f5. The lens shows a small amount of pincushion effect, which is easily fixed in Lightroom. The lens comes with an APO characteristic that minimizes chromatic aberration, and boy does it do the job. There is no chromatic aberration in front on your subject or behind the subject which is absolutely fantastic for a macro lens of this price point. I haven't seen any chromatic aberration in any of my images I've taken with this lens. So I tested this lens out on my Canon EOS R. Sharpness on this lens at 1 to 1 magnification is fantastic. And straight out the gate the lens is sharp from f2.8. This sharpness improves at f5.6 through to f11. Diffraction starts kicking in at f13 and it's manageable up until around f18, anything above that you're going to get blurry images due to diffraction. Sharpness on this lens at 2 to 1 is just as good. Out the gate at f2.8 it is sharp. 
again just like at one to one the sharpness improves up to 5.6 and you're getting really sharp images nice f stop for doing focus stacking the sharpness stays there up to around f10 after f10 diffraction starts kicking in but is manageable again up to f18 after that again everything is just out of focus because of diffraction on an APS-C camera, at 1 to 1 magnification, sharpness out the gate again at 2.8 is fantastic and improves at f4 and remains through to f10. Above f10, diffraction starts to kick in. It's manageable up to around f14, but after f14 on an APS-C camera, you're starting to get too much diffraction and your images will be blurred. And this is the same for 2 times macro as well. So when it comes to sharpness, the lower lens is sharper than the Canon. Although this is a macro lens for portraits, the lens works perfectly well. Here are some pictures of my daughters. The lens works adequate, although I haven't really used it that much for portraits. Let's talk about the likes and dislikes of this lens. What I like about this lens is the two times macro. Being able to go from infinity to two times without changing lens is a fantastic feature. When you're out in the field, as anyone who's done macro will know, you get bugs of all sizes. It's great not having to change lenses when you go from a butterfly shot to a spider shot. The sharpness on this lens is also the sharpest I've tested thus far in my macro career. As you can see from the example images, it produces beautiful images. If you are a Canon user, another bonus to this lens is they produce an EF version of this lens, which has auto aperture. Now, as you know, I am a fan of auto aperture in my macro lenses because it allows you to focus in low light situations a lot easier because the lens, when it's not taking a picture, is letting in more light. That is fantastic. You can, however, get an RF version, which is fully manual, and the uh, lenses for the Sony and the Nikons are also fully manual, so you'll be getting the full manual one there. Still a great lens. The uh, sharpness is exactly the same as the F version. You will be happy with this lens. Let's talk about the dislikes about this lens, and let's go back to that filter thread. The main thing I don't like about this lens is the fact it's not weather sealed. And because of that, unlike other weather sealed lenses, the front of the lens is actually open to the elements. As you can see there, there is nothing there. Now, Laura supply you with a UV filter. I believe this is probably just a piece of glass. It does not degrade the image. The, uh, all my sharpness tests were done with this filter on it. The sharpness doesn't improve if you take it off, so I would suggest you do not take off the filter in there, because if you do, you're going to get dirt and pollen into the lens. That's a big downer for me. I really hope Laura can fix that in the future. Also, the noise on the EF version is very loud, as you can see from this example. This is the Laura. Now, this is the Canon. You can see there's an audible difference there. It's nothing that will uh, put you off, it's not going to scare the insects away, but I do need to mention that in my review, that it is a noisy lens. One other thing that started to bug me is the little red dot on the end of the lens end, and this is just nitpicking, okay, so you know, this isn't going to stop you buying it. But I would prefer that red dot to be on the outside of my lens, so that when I'm coupling it to my camera, I can easily see it. And also, the focusing ring could be a little bit better, it's basically it's made out of metal rather than rubber which means you can't turn it with one finger. Now, if I look at the Canon here, I can turn that quite easily with one finger. So I am holding the camera handheld, remember. I can easily turn that without needing to do that. So I'm bracing my rig underneath like this. Okay, and I can turn that easily with one finger. The lower, I can't do that. Now, I can easily fix that by putting a rubber band around it, so it's not a big deal. It's definitely not a deal breaker. So who is this lens for? I believe this is for anyone who wants to get into macro photography. At this price point of around £450, this is an absolute steal. If you don't need autofocus or image stabilisation or weather sealing, then I would definitely recommend going for the lower. If you do need weather sealing, autofocus and image stabilisation, I will still recommend the Canon 100mm macro lens. It's still a fantastic lens and I still do use it for macro video. I think this is a fantastic lens for any macro photographer to get. You will not be disappointed. Their support is also great, so if you have an issue with a lens, they will quickly sort you out. 
I've got nothing to complain about apart from the weather ceiling, which I will keep complaining about until Lara will release a lens that has a fixed front element that the dust can't get into. I've enjoyed my time using this lens. As for which one I'm choosing for my bag, it's definitely the EF version because I do like the auto aperture. Lara are on a great run here, they have some fantastic glass. All they need to do now is bring auto aperture to the other platforms like Nikon and Sony, rever seal this lens and they are going to be the go-to lens for macro photography. All the images you're seeing in this video have been taken on the lower 100mm f2.8 2 times macro lens and I've been editing using my macro presets. Another thing I want to point out about this lens is if you have an APS-C camera like the 80D, when you put this on that body you're getting an equivalent magnification of 3.2. I don't think you would ever need to take this lens off that camera body if you are a macro photographer. I want to thank Laura for sending me over review units for these lenses. I want to thank them for kicking up the market and making lenses specifically for macro photographers. That is absolutely fantastic. I have such a company like this producing such unique lenses that us photographers can take advantage of. So I want to address Laura directly. You have a fantastic lens here, but it can be improved. If you make the grips rubber and easier to turn like the Canon lens, that would be great. If you can rever seal this lens, that would be the go-to lens for any macro photographer. It's fantastic. Just get that rever sealing. If you can't rever seal it like uh, Canon lenses, then at least make this front element sealed so it doesn't come off when you're using adapters. As for the other companies out there like Canon, Nikon, Sony, Sigma and Irix, balls in your court guys. Hello my net. So I have... Now I've been using this lens for several weeks, I even took it out on a macro adventure which is up... It cleans up nicely by F... It cleans up nicely by F5... It cleans up nicely by F7... This sharpness improves up to uh, this. This sharpness improves at F. Calm down, relax, breathe. As for the other companies like Canon, Nikon, Sony, Sigma, Tamron, I forget Tamron. 